I've seen quite a bit. I have seen Nintendo World Championship gray cartridge. I have yet to see a gold cartridge and I've yet to see stadium events. So <laughs> it was six figures. I've seen that. I've seen Pokemon Box. I've seen a couple of copies of Kuan, Haunting Ground, uh, Rule of Rose. got to hold a copy of Kuan for the PS2 that was sealed, but unfortunately I couldn't negotiate a deal with it, so we didn't get to buy that one. The buyer wanted too much. I wanted a little too much. You want it closer to retail value for it, which makes it really tough for us to make anything on it. Um, I have held and seen uh, several copies of Earthbound, including the big box Earthbound. Uh, I've seen a complete box Chrono Trigger for Super Nintendo, um, Arrow Fighters. Uh, like I was mentioning earlier, I've seen three Panesian carts for NES. Um, those will fetch a pretty penny as well, so quite a bit, honestly. But I mean, that comes with the territory. I mean, like I said, I've been doing it for six years, so. Mm -hmm. So we offer something similar to that. We tried to do that a while back and it was just getting so hard to keep up with. Mm -hmm. uh, what we try to do now is uh, we have a wish list on our website. So you can go on there and you can wish list items um, and then it will send an email to anybody who has that item wish listed. Um, we have found that that's a lot easier in terms of calling people because when we were trying to do that, um, if it was like a popular item that just wouldn't stay in stock, like Super Smash Brothers Melee on the GameCube, we'd have like six people on a list. We would call six of them. Obviously, nobody's going to answer because they don't have our number saved. So you'd leave a voicemail. Of the six people you called, you might have one person that calls you back and says, hey, I'm on the way to get it. Can you put it on hold? Then three of the other ones will just run to the store immediately looking for it. And then it creates more issues because yeah. we can't sell it to you over the phone, so I mean, you got to call us back. You've got to tell us that you're coming to get it. We'll put it on hold. Whereas on the website, you can purchase it immediately. Mm -hmm. You get an email. You click on the link. You can buy it right mm -hmm. then and there. And then we got a very big collection last year, last summer. I want to say um, the guy had the entire. North American NES set, including the Panesian carts, which were like the three rarest carts outside of like Nintendo World Championships and stadium events and things like that. Um, he also had this. He had a couple of like complete in-box systems that were like really, really nice. A couple of sealed items that were really, really nice. Um, just a big, massive collection. Two grand most likely, uh, and that's just a, um, we're trying to figure it out kind of price because they're not listed on eBay or anything like that. That's mm -hmm. what we use for all of our prices. Mm -hmm. um, the only way to have those was in the late 80s, you had to be an official Nintendo dealer. So like Sears, Roses, any of the big department stores mm -hmm. had those hanging up over all of the Nintendo products. So uh, only like the really extreme collectors will come across this. that much of an issue um, one thing GameStop's very notorious for is paying like 
at most 30% on their games. We try to always do around minimum 40, if not 50%, and then even give more than that in store credit. Uh, the one thing that GameStop does is they will show you what they're paying online as well. So we can always pull that up and see what they're paying and always pay more than them. We don't have as much of an overhang as well from where we only have a few local stores. Uh -huh. It's a lot easier for us to pay more and sell it for less. So GameStop has that corporate backing, which unfortunately, it's a nice thing, but it unfortunately shoots them in the foot a little bit because they can only pay so much and they can't go up on their prices, whereas we can. So.